All right, let me see. I'm trying to figure out what I clicked that. Oh, I have to share the screen. By the way, there was an announcement that I posted today. Hopefully everybody saw it. Oop, actually it was in the, this class. Hopefully I posted at the right thing here. Do not update your Adobe CC 2015 upgrade. The reason is, is the the upgrade actually takes you out of your, the update takes you out of your uh, licensed version and um, it'll put you into the trial version. So we don't want that. So we're trying to sort it out, figure out what's going on. So tonight we are going to work on reviewing the assessment. You carry around blind spots that might make you emphasize the wrong things in your portfolio or pursue work in an area that isn't your best. What do you think about that, Lisa? We carry around blind spots that might make you emphasize the wrong things in your portfolio or pursue work in an area that isn't your best. Okay, so um, so how do we deal with blind spots, and and what's the best way? Well, obviously, doing a self assessment is a good thing to do, but getting feedback and trusting that feedback. Self-assessments are scientific, not subjective. What this means is when you do a self-assessment, when you do a self-assessment, is this rock meaning that what the metrics and what's being measured is provable or does it mean that we kind of have an opinion? It's basically our opinion of reality. So our self-assessment scientific, meaning everything can be proven to be true or false using the scientific method, or are they subjective, meaning they're basically people's opinions. That's what subjective means. Scientific is defined as based on or characterized by the methods and principles of science. And subjective means based on or influenced by personal feelings, tastes, or opinions.
Let's look at question three. In general, solid experience is more valuable than training and can balance some gaps in formal education. So the point being made there is, can you learn anything on your job that you wouldn't learn in your schoolwork? Solid experience, meaning work experience or job experience, is more valuable than training and can balance some gaps in formal education. Now, the formal education is really what we're going through right now, taking classes. And training, again, you're just sitting, receiving instruction, Whereas solid experience, the requirement there is that you are doing work and solving problems. Let's move on to the next one here. Besides strengths and weaknesses, goals, values, and personality, a self-assessment assessment must also include a list of work experience that you have had. So does a self-assessment require that you have a list of work experience? Self-assessment, figuring out what types of things interest you in graphic design. Whereas your work experience does not necessarily dictate your strengths or your interests. Let's move on to question five. There's no ideal number of pieces to add to your portfolio, but whatever it might be, people overwhelmingly err on the side of too little. So is that a true statement? Is there an ideal number of pieces to add to your portfolio? Whatever it might be, people overwhelmingly err on the side of too little. Do we truly believe that people overwhelmingly err on the side of too little? When you look at portfolios, is your, mainly your first impression of, wow, there's not much here to look at. And is it true that there is no ideal number of pieces to add to your portfolio? That may be true or that may be false. The basic question is, do you mainly experience too little portfolios that have too little? I might believe that. There may not be an ideal number of pieces, but I don't know that I believe that the main problem is too little in general. Creative directors often Look for freelancers and employees who will take initiative without losing sight of the project goals. Freelancers, meaning contract people that they hire, not permanently. Employees, people they do hire permanently. Is it good to take initiative without losing sight of the project goals? What that means is taking initiative means trying something out that may not have been told or outlined exactly, is that a good thing? And if so, then this would be a true statement. How about number seven? Your creative niche has particular portfolio expectations and require a mixture of projects to meet those expectations. 
So what that means is depending on the area that you go into in graphic design, that will dictate particular expectations of your portfolio. For example, if you're going to become an, an animation designer, then they're gonna to expect to see animations. But if it's logo design, they'll expect to see logos. So you do need to be clear about that and then, and then meet the expectations. If your pieces are too diverse in medium look, subject, or clientele, they can imply that you haven't yet figured out what you do best and that you have to yet to find your creative voice. Have you ever, uh, obviously our, our education here puts you through a lot of different classes. So we're gonna have to start narrowing down on what is a focus. And that's exactly the purpose of, of this class. So that we narrow it down, we can then isolate that and focus on that. Um, so if you're, if you're too diverse, diverse means scattered. It's better to be focused. For some designer professions, an identifiable style is nothing short of a requirement. What that means is if you choose an area of design, you will have to figure out a particular style in that area, that particular area of design that, that is your style. Now, you might ask the question, well, what about, you know, how can I be flexible to other um, branding differences? And, and that's a very good question. In other words, if we focus on, um, let's say we have a client that's, uh, oh, Coca-Cola or, or Mountain Dew versus a client that's uh, 1-800-Flowers, you know, obviously there might, how do you, show your own style when you're having to copy the style of, of the customer. So I think that's important, but nonetheless, I think that what's important here that is that uh, you do need to have a consistency, some marks of consistency across your work. And finally, what are the various ingredients of a portfolio. Hold on, I've got, excuse me, one second. I think I'm gonna to try to pause this recording. If, give me a second to uh, have a little, see if I can pause this one second. How do you pause? Let's see. Hmm. Oh, here we go. Pause. Be right back. Give me one minute. All right. So let's see. Where were we? Think we're here. Um, I think right in here. What are the various ingredients of a portfolio? Technology and craft, concept creativity, variety. Make sure it's recording. 
you know, I think it's probably recording this screen. Maybe it's a screen. Uh, can you see my screen okay? Can you see the test right here on my screen? I think so. Awesome. Okay, so what are the various ingredients of a portfolio? Technology and craft, concept, creativity, variety, uh, style, process. Now, why wouldn't art be an ingredient of a, of a portfolio? I'm just going to double check the answer key because um, let's see. Modules. I'm going to double check this uh, book just to make sure that what's here correlates with what's in our book. Huh. Well, I'm kind of not seeing where that is really holding out because the answer key leaves out art and I don't know why. Well, that's a tip for you. The answer key leaves out art, and, and I actually don't know why. Couldn't find it. Well, I guess it's ingredients, because now with this question, what elements make up a portfolio mix? Design, game design. So a mix is really showing what you bring forward to the, the portfolio. Two D graphics, motion and interaction. Game design is a possible thing that you bring. Music, no. Art, yes. Um, design, yes. So maybe it's because art is actually part of a, an element which is a portfolio mix rather than an ingredient of a portfolio. Kind of splitting hairs there though. Number 12, an illustrator who has res researched his targets, styles, and clientele can showcase examples of appropriate work. That's a question I had before. But I, I don't know if this is the same thing question I had, whether or not a, an illustrator who works and creates work based upon uh, client styles uh, Yeah, that's a different question, actually, just whether or not somebody can do research and showcase the examples of the appropriate work. Which of the following is the correct order of stages 
in researching your target audience. So what you have to do is choose the order here. So um, what order do these steps come in? Doing the basic market research, finding your target audience category, so basic and then target the audience category. Select specific companies. Once you figure out the target audience, audience category, and then research the best way to present yourself. That would be the order, correct order of stages in researching your target audience. Once again, do the basic market research, find your target audience category, select specific companies, and then finally research the best way to present yourself. Number 14, design and advertising are driven by many things except market forces. Wow, that's pretty obvious. Huh. Market forces are what dictate design and advertising. Number 15, when you have isolated your target audience category, you should have 10 or less companies. That's something that's in the, target, in the uh, textbook, but it's not necessarily 10 or less. Number 16, when studying specific companies, look for what they have in common, their process or client relationships, types of clients they specialize in, and range of work they do. So here you are, limited down to one or two dozen companies, try to figure out what they have in common, their process or client relationships types of clients they specialize in, and then the range of work that they do. Word of mouth information from personal and local contacts is the most precious and useful source, particularly to find out if the company offers a solid work opportunity. That is true. Most precious and useful source, particularly to find out if the company offers a solid work opportunity. Here, select all the resources at your disposal for researching your target market, forums and directories, personal contacts, books, periodicals and magazines, social networking, schools, universities and alumni associations, web search engines. I can't think of any of these that would not be helpful. Number 19. When reviewing sample portfolios at the end of each chapter, the author describes the navigation and architecture of the portfolio website, its content, and the future plans of the graphic designer. Navigation and architecture of the portfolio website. Navigation means how do you click around. Architectures, like what content is all there. It's content and the future plans of the graphic designer. It's true. Next question. An electronic portfolio can be packaged in a variety of ways depending on your needs, knowledge, and time constraints. Choose the appropriate formats below. Well, this site, this, this, um, this class is about that one. Now we talked about electronic portfolio that you can put on a CD or DVD. 
How about a slideshow presentation? That's electronic. And then I remember mentioning a PDF file. Remember it's saying electronic. Okay. 21, there are preferred media and delivery methods in different creative fields. Preferred media, in other words, in other words what type of media is most suitable? Delivery methods, how does it get delivered? In different creative fields. Number 22, although the options for portfolio format and venue can continue to expand, they boil down to one of three delivery categories, portable, email, or online. So those are the three delivery categories, and that refers to up here, delivery methods, and so same thing down here. And depending on the one you choose, we'll obviously end up dictating exactly the what delivery category you're in. Portable media includes CDs and DVDs on your personal laptop. Yeah, that's one of those electronic media. Twenty-four, distributing files electronically can occur using email and attaching the file using the file transfer protocol or FTP site, using Dropbox.com, something I use, and using a link to an online website. If you do deliver it via email, it needs to be well zipped up file by 10 megabytes or smaller. So that would be via email or FTP site. That's not too common, I guess, but it does get over the 10 megabyte limit. Goes up to as much as the website or FTP site has been set up for. Or you can stage it on your, in maybe a zip file and load it on dropbox.com and grab the link, show that. Or it's using a link to an online website. That's what we're gonna focus on in this class. And finally, 25, your online portfolio can be published through which of the following methods? On a blog, sure. Social networking site, yeah, I guess so. Maybe like Facebook page or maybe a particular um, blog or something. Hosted gallery presentations, definitely. Google search engine, well, Google search engine isn't really something you would use to publish. It's actually what you use to looking. Creative services portfolio site, self-publishing site, blogs, hosted, no, that's okay. Hosted gallery presentations. All of these are pertinent, but the Google search engine is how you go looking for them. It's not how you would be publishing it. But the rest are definite possibilities. All right, well, thank you very much, uh, Lisa, again, for showing up. I appreciate it. I'll go ahead and uh, upload this file later on tonight. And if you have any questions, let me know. Thanks again. Good night.